All right. Good afternoon, traders. Some of you, good afternoon again. Some of you, this may be the third time we're hanging out today. So that's an embarrassment of riches. I feel lucky. Good to see everybody. Welcome out to the Trade Spoon Active Investor Workshop Series. We get to hang out every other week and talk about strategies, indicators, uh, planning, organization, structure, all the good stuff, right, that helps to develop a better trading process. Good afternoon to you, Gary. It's quiet out there. I need you guys to uh, let me know that you're alive and well, that you're on uh, your afternoon coffee, ready to get your head in the game for this thing here. <laughs> Hello again, Faust. Good to see you, Sunil. First time today. That's all right. That's all right. At least we get one, right? At least we get one. So welcome out, everybody. My name is Scott Beck. I am the head trading coach here at Trade Spoon. I, uh, I'm lucky enough to get to hang out with you guys for some uh, trading rooms periodically during the week. And like I said, every other week we get this little extravaganza today. We are talking about credit spreads, which is a, a favorite of mine. I love credit spreads. Now, it was interesting because it said on the title, I noticed it said credit spreads for a volatile market. And unfortunately, right now, we're not really in a volatile market, right? I mean, there might be some choppiness, but when we talk about actual implied volatility, and we'll, and we'll, we'll, we'll get to <coughs> assessing that in more detail, during today's presentation. But as we talk about assessing implied volatility, or volatility, we're, we're thinking about implied volatility more than anything. Um, and so with, imp with implied volatility, we're looking at expectations and then subsequently option premium. What we're talking about here today is credit spreads. We're selling for a credit, we're collecting, right? We're collecting. So how much are we collecting? Well, the higher vol the volatility, the more you're collecting. Of course, if the volatility is too high, then we get a little bit concerned about the dramatic price fluctuations that tend to come along with that. So yeah, realistically for me, I'm thinking like mid-level volatility. Super high vol, eh, that's tough, man. You're going to be seeing some chop in the market. But if it's medium high, medium vol, Things are starting to settle down, but there's still some nice premium out there for us. Um, something I'll be on the lookout for, and I know something that Vlad has been talking about, is a correction. And, and that correction is what's going to really set us up for a round of credit spreads. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that and what it looks like here as part of this. I don't have slides, so there's just this, a little bit about me. Like I said, I'm the head trading coach. Um, I've been trading for over 20 years. I've been coaching, teaching, mentoring for about 17 of those years. I need to remind you, as always, that trading can evolve substantial risk and may not be suitable for all investors. Please read characteristics and risks, standardized options prior to investing in them. Evaluate any Strategy prior to use to understand risk and suitability, you must be aware of the risks, be willing to accept them in order to trade in these markets. Trade Spoon and myself are not investment advisors, not registered with the SEC or FINRA. It should not be assumed that future trade picks will be profitable or will equal past performance. The information in this presentation is provided solely for general education and information purposes. Any strategies discussed, including examples using actual securities and price data, are strictly for illustrative and educational purposes. In order to simplify the math, commissions, fees, margin, interest, and taxes have not been included in the examples used in this presentation. Those costs will impact the outcome of your results and should be considered. Lastly, I and or the team of TradeSpoon may have a financial interest in the securities presented on the trade picks. Vlad Carpel, TradeSpoon founder, is also an investor and consultant of AOS Inc., which does business as Trading Block and Money Block, a FINRA and SIPC member broker dealer firm. TradeSpoon and AOS are not affiliated companies, and each firm's material is not endorsed by the other. Henry, good to see you, sir. Glad to have you. I hope you're safe on the road. Uh, interesting day today. I uh, I completely forgot to give the gold medals, but it looks like the gold medal went to B, which was me. 
Um, so can I briefly speak on how you find a stock suitable for credit spreads and basic setups, um, including expiration, width, premium, etc. Well, geez, Cecil, you just spoiled the whole presentation because that's exactly what we're talking about today. Let's let's start with the beginning of that. What what makes it appealing, right? Let's start with how to find and and here's the deal. What I want you to realize about a credit spread. Let's start with these characteristics here. Uh, credit spread is a selling strategy. So uh, whenever you sell a credit spread, the first thing you have to realize is the credit you collect is the maximum risk that you can make, right? So you're you're capping yourself. Um, you're capping your risk. You you're or excuse me, you're capping your potential. You also cap your risk. Your risk is defined by the width of the strikes that you are utilizing minus the credit you collect. So to keep the math easy, if I have a $2 wide spread and I collect a dollar credit, dollar worth of credit, dollar worth of risk, right? Um, now, the fact that we're selling makes people think, oh, time is now on our side. And to some extent, time is on our side, but it's not a given. Right, it's not a, I expect to always be theta positive on my trade. That should not be your expectation at all. In certain instances, time is on our side. So for a lot of people, the, the concept of theta in regard to a credit spread, they start thinking credit spreads are time spreads. They're not, they are absolutely not. A time spread would be a calendar spread, maybe a butterfly spread an iron condor, um, those are time spreads, meaning the driver of the trade is theta. Then we have either a positive or ve negative vega to deal with. And if you look at the delta of a, of a time spread, it's delta neutral. You have a very low delta, small, one way or the other. Credit spreads are directional spreads. You are directionally biased. So when you ask, how do you find a stock suitable for a credit spread? The first thing you need to find is a stock that is moving in a deliberate trend. A stock that is looking like it is ready to either bounce higher. So for me, that would mean bouncing off of a support level. Or if you happen to be a breakout trader, then that would be breaking through a resistance level, something that indicates, I think it's going to go up. Or I think it is bouncing down off of a resistance level. It's trending down already. It's, it's bouncing off of a support level lower, or it's breaking through a, uh, excuse me, it's bouncing off of a resistance level lower or breaking through a support lower. But the first criteria is are you directional if you don't have a directional bias you shouldn't be interested in a credit spread credit spread is a directional trade so directional next i should have a if i'm gonna do it if i'm gonna do a trade it should be in a, a a near setup position so for me that would mean it's on my short list and i don't mean i don't mean short meaning i'm gonna short the stock i mean short meaning my my small list of stocks that I think are potentially setting up for directional trades. Okay, so whatever rules you're using for directional trades now to either buy stock or buy options, those same rules, if you're comfortable and confident in those rules, would apply for credit spreads. Are you bullish or bearish? Do you believe you're at a setup point? So then what are we looking for? Ideally, what we're looking for is higher implied volatility. Um, let's go take a look. We were looking at a trade on FCX today. So what kind of a trend do I see here? I see an uptrend. Ooh. Right, nice uptrend. What else do I see? I see a stock that is 
at or near a support level. Now we've gone a little sideways here, but we've done that before, before we bust it out again. So I'm thinking what I'm thinking it's a support level. And potentially going to bounce. Um, which means I think it is going higher. However, what is missing here? We actually did take a trade on this in the trading room today. Uh, we ended up building the debit spread, which was a little bit more of a, of a speculative trade. So it was based more on price moving first than time ticking second. Um, but in, in this situation, uh, in this situation, the thing that I'm going to be looking at is the implied volatility. So if you look down here, I have an implied volatility chart. And the best way to read this is to essentially cut it into thirds. So up here is high, medium, and low. Um, like I said, if it's real high, you want to be a little careful, although you'll notice back here, things were still not overly choppy during this time. But in that circumstance there, you had volatility in the 70 percentiles, right? 70, almost even 80. No, we didn't get to set. We got high 60s. Right now we're in the 40s. So 20% higher, that would collect you a significantly higher amount of premium. The higher the implied volatility, the more expensive the options are. That's that's the general rule of thumb, right? That's the general rule of thumb. Now, we've, we've been doing a lot less. Let me go back to SPY here. A question said, instead of a debit call spread that Vlad Select suggested for Vail, what do you think of a calendar? Um, so, so let me just pull that up real quick. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would want to, that's a little more directional than I want for a calendar. For a calendar, I tend to be very sideways. I do a lot of calendars and butterflies in the summer because we tend to see a lot of sideways price action. Um, FCX King Copper with growing inflation is the winner. I had a previous option trade. Yeah, yeah, we've done well. We've traded some CCJ, some FCX, materials, miners. It's all been going pretty well. Um, I'm definitely still bullish on it. You can see it looks quite strong here. Um, however, this is not an ideal candidate for a credit spread because the options are cheap. What does a credit spread still give me? Still gives me, uh, it still gives me uh, probability, right? So the trade I built, I need it to get up over 44. That's all I need. Over 44. It's not a lot to ask for, right? Uh, two and a half points, $44 stock. You're talking, what, 6%-ish? It's not much that I need to happen here. If it gets above 44 by uh, the end of this, I'll, I'll get four or five to one on my money. So it's a little bit speculative, a little bit of time decay. It's not a high probability trade though, right? Um, so when you when you do credit spreads, there's two different ways to go, in my opinion. So number one, just as a general rule, I don't believe in selling intrinsic value. Right. So I'm not looking to sell a deep in the money option where I get a big credit because I won't keep that credit unless the stock makes a big move. Remember that part of the appeal of a credit spread is the probability factor. So if I were to build a credit spread here, I'd probably sell at the money, which is around 41. And then maybe I'd buy out of the money, like 39. And then I'd have my stop loss somewhere around here. Now, another variation would be a high probability credit spread. So maybe I go back here and I think I'm going to sell a 37 strike price, buy a 35, and I'm going to let it ride because time's on my side, right? So, so at the money is going to be more aggressive. It's going to be bigger credit, but you're going to need to manage it. You're going to need to have a, an exit strategy. Out of the money is going to be a probability trade. You're going to get a smaller credit. You're going to have higher potential of success. 
Um, but you're likely not going to do much by way of closing that trade. You're likely going to stick with it. Um, now, I'm going to go build this. I'm going to go build out the money and out of the money on FCX. But I do want to talk one more thing, generically speaking. Um, so if, you, if you're not clear with what the, the criteria are, remember one more time, directionally biased. So you should have a trend. Directionally biased. So you should have a... Uh, a, a transition point where you think it's likely to either break up or bounce up. So bouncing off support, breaking through resistance if you're bullish, bouncing off resistance or breaking through support if you're bearish, uh, I should have high implied volatility. If I don't have implied volatility, it's not ideal, but I still might be interested in it because maybe I need, um, I want some probability. I want a high prob I want some theta with higher probability. Maybe and this has happened to me, if I all of a sudden have um, a bunch of credit spreads on, uh, I am at risk for the market moving higher and volatility moving lower. All my calendar spreads are vega positive. They make money if implied volatility rises, right? Credit spreads make money when volatility falls. They're vega negative. So I might actually put on a couple of credit spreads just to reduce the amount of, of positive vega that I'm looking at um, in, in the context of my trades. So again, I know we're, we're doing some fairly high level uh, discussion in this with the Greeks and what we're putting into it. So if, uh, if anything is unclear, certainly ask clarifying questions. I have no problem uh, going in and answering them. So what happens if we have a correction? Well, let's start with what a correction is. Dropping to here is not a correction. It's only 16 points, right? That's like six, 7%. Uh, our high is 423.21, which we hit today. So 423.21 times 0 0.9. That is a correction right there. 381. Okay. So let me put that. Let me put that in. Uh, okay, so if we saw this happen, it would probably be a move down, a little bit of a consolidation, and then a, a pretty hard drop, right? I mean, that's that's likely how this would transpire. Um, that would be pretty nasty if that came came about. What would the market do as a result of that? Now, let me show you. That puts us down here. So that's a, the trend would still be intact, but that's a pretty big drop. Now, what would happen on the VIX, right? What would happen if the SPY drops down here that big, what would the VIX do? Uh, I would expect that the VIX would end up back up in the mid to upper 30s. So if we got a true correction, possibly even higher still, but at least here, if not even up into the mid to upper 40s. So that would be a hell of a spike up. Now we have volatility. Now we have premium. So what's happening is people start buying options and the market makers are like, oh, people are buying. It's actually puts that tend to drive this here. And as they start buying that, the volatility goes up, 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 up. That becomes that becomes the, the premiums inflating. Now, here's what I want you to think about. If we got a 10% correction and then it stabilized, I would still be bullish overall uh, for this market recovery that the World Bank said is going to be the fastest in 80 years. Fastest recovery in 80 years, they said. I don't know if that's true. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. But if it does correct before it then goes on its next leg, which is fine, it's very healthy for a market to go through a correction, 
I don't want to buy calls, right? I don't want to buy calls and have this drop while I'm buying calls. If I buy calls, I'm beta positive. I want volatility to rise. If I buy calls and I'm beta, beta buy calls and I'm beta positive and I want volatility to rise, I will lose money if volatility falls. I will lose money from time. I will lose money from volatility. There's not much working for me. If I do a naked put or a credit spread coming out of this volatility swell, then I make money from the direction going up. I make money from time ticking. I make money from volatility going down. That's when this strategy does its best, right? The fact, the fact that we have seen the volatility continue dropping, we know that options have gotten more and more um, inexpensive, cheaper and cheaper. Now, right here, you can see it looks like it might be stabilizing. And if this turns, you know, be careful. But I would want to wait for this to go up, turn over. Then when you think it's going to come back down, when it's inflated and we get more premium, that's the last criteria, right, for the ideal circumstances. Like I said, will people still put on credit spreads in this market? Yeah. What's the thought process? The thought process is we recognize we're not getting as much money, but we are, are, are going to accept that sacrifice. That becomes the pawn in this circumstance. This is something I say with people I work with all the time. In, in, in almost any circumstance in trading, one of the things you need to do is make sure you recognize your pawns, meaning what are you willing to sacrifice for the greater good of your trading? Okay, so let's go take a look. Now that we have a better sense of the context of how and why credit spreads come into play in our strategies, let's go look at one specifically on FCX, our good friend, the copper producer. How do they look compared to uh, Rio? A little better. Rio has a big copper mine, largest open pit mine in the world, like literally maybe an hour from, like 30 minutes from my house. I know you guys are all fascinated by that little tip of information. <laughs> you were wondering, Scott, do you live near a, a large open pit mine that mines copper? Yeah, I do, as a matter of fact. Thank you for asking. Okay, what kind of trade do we want to build on this? So let's go into FCX. Is it getting hot where you guys are? We're on a heat wave. Uh, Utah had its earliest 100 degree day of record. 100 degree day earlier in the year than any, I mean, it's just hot, it's too hot, 100 degrees. Uh, FCX, let's add some simulated trades. It got quiet in here. I feel like I'm just talking to myself. Verticals, what are we thinking about here? So let's start with a, I'm gonna uncheck my, so this was my debit spread. If this is all you saw, you wouldn't know too much about this. Um, you would know it's either a, a, a bull call or a bull put, but you wouldn't know which. You'll notice that this trade here, I don't actually get positive time decay. I'm starting this negative. Not as negative as if I had bought the option, but I am negative. My thought then is if this makes a move up above about 43, once it crosses that line, then you'll notice my theta gets positive and I start making money from time. And then as it crosses into this area here, this is where I have the best bang for the buck for time. If it goes all the way through that, I'll sit on it, wait till expiration, collect a thousand bucks. Um, my risk is back here by Friday. If it, if it gets down here by Friday, I'm out keeping the loss around 200. So what do I have here? I have a trade that's risking two to possibly make five with a pretty good chance of making at least three. That's that's three to one, right? That's my uh, that's my expectation here. That's why I chose to do the debit spread. 
So let's uncheck that. And let's uh, let's reconfigure this first and foremost. I'm going to go more time. So this was speculative, so I only went here. Uh, I would go at least July, maybe August, but at least July. So let's go out to July. And like I said, I would start off with a 41 by 39 probably. And it's going to look like this. So you'll notice it's a little different now. Right, it's a little bit different now in that, although I'll tell you what, the reward to risk actually looks not bad at all <laughs> as I look at this. What do I need this to do? I need it to stay above 41. I would probably actually give it a little bit more room, but this looks okay. This looks all right. Um, what are my expectations here? So you'll notice my time is positive. How do I know that? Because my theta tells me I'm making money from time decay, positive theta. I'm making money from volatility going down. I'm negative vega. I'm making money from the stock going up. I'm delta positive. What's the order? Well, you can see the delta is significantly, significantly larger than the theta or the vega. So delta is the driver. That means the direction of the trade is the driver. I'm directionally biased. I make some money from time, some money from volatility dropping, right? That's a little more aggressive. That's looking for a better reward to risk ratio. That requires more effort on your part in this area here, not to let it drop. Because if you let it drop into this area, you're in no man's land. Time is working against you. It works at a pretty steady rate. We just really want to avoid that if we're doing a, a, a directionally biased credit spread. Okay, now let's go look at a different opportunity. We said the 37, 35, maybe. Is that what I said? I can't remember now. 37 by 35. So what's the probability that it stays out of the money? Higher. It could break down and still test this and bounce off of it. So I've got a much higher probability of it staying above 37 than I do staying above 41, obviously, right? That's a 10% difference. If we wanted, we could even come in here and we could look at the probability model. Um, now this is until July. 16th so you can see on this probability model that july 16th is here what are the odds it stays above 41 it's about uh, a little less than 50 50 very close though to 50 50 well, if I can get 50-50 odds and get three, two and a half or three to one on my money, that's a reasonable prospect, right? That's a that's a very reasonable prospect. Um, if I want it to stay above 37, the probability of it staying above 37 is uh, 70%. So I've got a much better uh, a chance of it staying above there. Now, remember, that's out here at this date. You would still have to suffer through it if it happened sooner than that. So don't look at this uh, implied volatility as at all being dogmatic. Uh, let me go back. So now with this out of the money, so I went from an at the money credit spread where I'm looking to get a bigger credit. You can see my credit's much bigger, 86 versus 36, both on a $2 wide spread. So at the money credit spread is going to be lower probability, higher reward to risk. Uh, this out of the money credit spread is gonna be higher probability, but also higher risk. If I'm wrong, I could lose substantially more. That's the first thing I want you to recognize 
is we don't really have, I can't exit this thing here. I'm thinking, hey, as long as it doesn't break 37. But if I wait for it to get all the way down here to 37, I could be watching myself lose $500. And the most I can make on this trade is only $360. So I need to be right 60 or 70% of the time if those are my prospects. And that's assuming I get out at 36, right? If I get out at 36, if somehow I let this thing get away from me and get down into this area here, I have seen, and maybe some of you can attest to this. I've seen catastrophic losses where all of a sudden you're like, well, maybe it'll come back. And then all of a sudden it doesn't, it goes a little further. And you're like, well, now I can't do anything. I got to wait. And then it's a little further. And before you know it, you're, you're down 1,000, 1,400, 1,500, 18. I mean, it's not 18. You can't get there. But 1,000 to 1,500 would be a substantial loss on a trade that could only produce at most $360. So clearly that cannot be the reward to risk prospects. Um, there's gotta be more, um, more to it necessarily than that. I was told that earnings are on July 23rd. Plenty of time. Just because I'm selling July, well, I mean, I'm only selling July 16, so that wouldn't even get me all the way there. Um, but I am, uh, I've got plenty of time for this. One of these is the probability trade. If this dropped down here to 38, I would just sit on it. Drop down here to 37 and change, I would sit on it. If it even tested a little below, still sit on it. It would have to break, and then I would say, now I'm out. So in that regard, if I'm risking, let's call it $600 uh, to make 350, my reward to risk is skewed a little bit, right? That's a little bit skewed. I don't like that. I like to have better reward to risk ratios. So yeah, that's, that's just a, a point of, of clarification, if you will. Um, so. What what am I thinking here? Now, what are the what are some appealing things? Some people would say, well, why don't I just go to June? If I just go to June, um, what's the wrong? I get to expiration sooner, but my risk is harder to control. Right down here, I'm losing three hundred and thirty dollars versus, oh, I mean July. Was I on July? What was I on? Yeah, look at that. So let's just, let's just move this as our stop, 40. Risk level 177. I move this from July to June, risk level doubles, and it accelerates even faster. So it's harder to control your risk with shorter term options, even on credit spreads. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, but I want that time decay working for me faster. I get it. Again, learn to recognize your pawns. And what does that mean? It means that you need to know when you're building a trade, what are you willing to sacrifice? So, well, that's, that's, that's what we're thinking about is, are we willing to sacrifice probability for more reward to risk ratio or are we more likely to sacrifice reward to risk ratio for higher probability and you're not committed obviously as the market changes you might do different i might be looking for probability in a low ball market like we're in now because things aren't moving that much where i'm looking for reward to risk ratio when i'm in a higher ball market like we'll be if we go through a correction um so there it is now can you build a one week credit spread sure and and they could be right five six seven eight weeks in a row and then the ninth one it could hurt you really badly so just be careful with those it, it seems lot uh, uh uh necessary pros or cons versus two wide versus five wide well this is only a 40 dollar stock I mean, I could start to go wider, but if I go wider, 
I'm raising my margin requirement. You'll notice I'm putting myself outside of, sorry, I should go the other way. Um, I, I steepen this, so I steepen the amount of loss that the trade is subject to taking. You can see that. So that's what it does, is it does have an impact. Um, uh, what I'm looking to do from a standard perspective, let me go back to the chart on this and hopefully this answers, answers your question, Cecil. I'm looking to establish a stop level. So I'm saying, here's my entry. And then my stop is going to be somewhere underneath this. So underneath there, um, maybe even a little higher, actually. Entry, maybe the stop here just below 40. So then I'm going to put my next strike underneath. I like to have my two strike prices straddle. And I don't mean this is a straddle trade. I mean, they're literally like a straddle, like you're standing over it and it's in between. I like that to be what I'm looking for. If I go $5 wide or $10 wide, it, it defeats the purpose. I'm paying for something that I'm just not going to use. The only thing that would do is it would give you a lower margin requirement. Scratch that. A higher a higher uh, uh, margin requirement, but also a bigger credit. So I tend to go, I would say $40 stock, too wide, maybe 3 to 5% wide. But that would mean on a, a $3,000 stock, if I was trading Amazon, I, I I would I would uh, let's see around 100 to 150 points wide possibly, which makes it very difficult to to trade. Okay. Um, so $10 wide, uh, what you're going to find is you're going to find that as you move through more expensive stocks, that's what's going to lead you to wider spreads. However, I don't typically do just dollar wide spreads, right? That's not something that I'm necessarily interested in is just doing uh, a $1 wide spread. I definitely want to make my spread build my spread very, very um, particularly uh, around the money. So if you're asking my style, I like to go somewhere around three to 5% wide. I like to sell at the money. I like to buy out of the money and I like my stop loss or at least my stop level somewhere in between the two strikes. You will find a lot of traders out there who will sell out of the money and then buy further out of the money and they say this is a high probability spread. Remember that high probability means low credit. High probability means low reward to risk ratio. Um, if you're willing to sell closer to the money, then you'll find yourself getting a little bit more bang for your buck. But like I said, it really doesn't benefit you to sell options um, or to sell cheap options, right? There's just no uh, benefit to that. Options are cheap. Typically, we're going to buy them. Options are more expensive because volatility is high. Then we're going to... Uh, then we're going to sell them. Okay. So that, my friends, are what we're looking at for credit spreads. Why would you do one now? Probability, right? Probability, nothing more than probability. Um, it's, a, it's a high probability 
trade, um, especially when we build it out of the money. If I can get a little bit of time decay, I'm going to. Um, that is basically the strategy. That is basically you know, what we're looking to do with this type of, of, of a trade. So with that in mind, I'm going to open it up to your questions. That's what we'll finish with. So yeah, sock it to me. Um, oh, no questions. That must mean it was well explained, huh? Love it. Love it. Anything? So what do we want to do right now? If you're going to trade it, trade it because uh, you want to add some probability. You want to add some negative Vega possibly to the mix. When would be the next real good time to see um, the, the credit spreads get used? It would be after a consolidation when the implied volatility has risen. That is going to be one of the more important parts of uh, what it is that we're looking for. Um, uh, you would only get a higher bang for your buck with options closer in the money. If you are not assigned, do not have to roll in a more volatile environment. Is it not better to go further out of the money? to ensure you get to keep the spread premium. Well, Jeff, remember, I don't I don't sell in the money options. Um, obviously, though, if the stock goes against me, at the money goes to in the money. But if that happens, I'm going to be looking to close my trade. It's not a probability trade, it's a directional trade. I have a trading rule that says, if the original reason for getting in a trade is no longer valid, get out. If the original reason for getting in a trade is no longer valid, get out. Why'd I get in? Because I was bullish, first of all. Because I thought it was bouncing off of support, second of all. Because I thought the, the implied volatility was hot. Well, if any of those things change, then I'm going to start to, to you know evaluate if I need to still be uh, doing these types of trades. Um, so you're right. Uh, you're right that if it goes in the money, there is some assignment risk. Although if there's not a dividend and you're not at expiration, the odds of getting assigned are actually quite low, right? What I would want you to think about is, have you ever bought an option that went in the money and as soon as it went in the money, you exercised it? Me neither. Right? I'm not buying options to exercise them. When I buy options, I'm buying them for them to go up in value. And then when they've gone up in value, then I'm going to look to uh, close for a profit. I'm not trying to buy the stock to buy the option. That actually doesn't make any sense. If you're going to use options to acquire stock, you're better off selling a naked put instead of a credit spread. Right, A credit spread is used to reduce your margin requirement. So if you sell a naked put and then the stock goes against you, then it might get put to you at a discount. Although, you know, if it just keeps getting additionally discounted, that's not such a great deal. So again, be careful with that. Your requirements for premium based on the width of the spread. Um, boy, I'd like to get at least half of, well, let's see. I would say half to two thirds of the width of the spread would be ideal. You won't get that now because there's not enough volatility. But I would say, you know, if I'm if I'm two dollars wide, I'd like to get a dollar to a dollar twenty. If I'm five dollars wide, I'd like two fifty to three three thirty, right? Something along those lines. Um, but you know, what I would say is, if you're going to do these, make sure you have some kind of an option pricing model to help. Like, I mean, this 
<laughs> the sneaker swim model is fantastic. It, it really helps to allow you to build the spread, see what it looks like, and uh, uh, be prepared to understand what's at risk, how many positions should we do, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, but that's it. What else? Anything else? Good questions. Very good questions. Any good way to trade meme stocks? <laughs> ah, no. I mean, the only good way is to um, let's take a look. So here's GameStop, $20 stock. You can't short it because you'll get on the wrong side of a steamroll. I would be unwilling to buy it because I think it's it's a not a three hundred dollar stock. I think it's at best a fifty dollar stock, maybe even a twenty five dollar stock. Um, but here it is sitting at three hundred, and there's going to be some shocking earnings potentially tomorrow. But the implied volatility is outrageously high, right? Outrageously high. Sell deep out of the money. Put spreads on meme stocks. I mean, it is high, right, Jeff? You're not wrong, but look at how high it gets. If you sell now and that volatility goes up to 400, it will crush you, crush you, right? I don't want that. I'm vague and negative. I don't want volatility to rise. Um, honestly, I, I don't really see the appeal of meme stocks, right? I don't want to do what everybody else is trying to do, if that makes sense. Like it seems like, oh, there could be something here. And, and we, you know, if you're ever going to do it, just do it speculatively. Um, but for me, I, I'm, I'm not even uh, uh, worried about it. What do I prefer on credit spreads for time to expiration? Um, I would say 30 to 45 days for me personally. 30 to 45 days is the sweet spot. There are times I might go shorter. Rarely are there times if I'm going to go longer unless I'm doing a you know, a, a, a longer, more stable trade. But yeah, I would say for me, 30 to 45 days is what I'm looking for. Um, yeah, no, Jeff, I get what you're saying. Um, even when you sell a, when you sell a put spread, you are vega negative. If, if that volatility, which you can see was at four, hundred percent back here when it made a run like this yeah so like right here it went from 180 up to 500 percent volatility if you sell a credit spread even if it's deep out of the money and then that volatility rises that will put downward pressure on your trade right um yeah i mean look if you if you're interested have a go i'm not trying to convince anybody not to do it i just don't see why you would want to What's the appeal of a GameStop? It's a, it, 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 you know, I don't, I don't, for me, I've made money for 20 years without having to trade meme stock. I don't even know what a meme stock was until, until right here. <laughs> right? I have no interest in it, period. Like that's not in my core strategies. Um, I'm not interested in flash, flash in the pan. I'm interested in tried and true. Right, so yeah, I'll, I'll watch, sure. Um, I'll watch, but I'm not, I, I just don't have interests. If you do, have a go, right? What I would say is make sure you understand because the market has a way of making you understand when you're like, oh, what could go wrong? And then you pull the trigger and then the market's like, here, let me show you. <laughs> let me show you what could go wrong. Let me show you what happens on a vega negative trade when volatility goes up 100%. That's hard to even talk about. Like, what do you mean volatility goes up 100%? Well, look at it. You can see it's done that before. Um, how about selling one call out of the money, buying two calls way out of the money? So now you're talking about ratio spreads. And again, for me, I don't see why we would want to work so hard to come up with a strategy that what? What's your directional bias on GameStop? Are you bullish or bearish? Right? Are you are you bullish or bearish? Start with that. 
for any trade I'm going to do with options, the first thing I have to decide, am I bullish, bearish, or neutral? Then I can start to work. But what are you? It's, it's, it's at 300 like it was a few months ago. Um, imagine people who sold a 150 by 140 spread right here because, oh, it's so far out of the money. And then all of a sudden it drops down here to 125. And it, kind of, and it came back, but do you know how much money you would be losing right here? It's, it's just absolutely significant. So the question is, why did you do it in the first place? I have to be able to quantify the risk on a trade. Where am I wrong? How much will I lose if I get there in order for me to position size the trade? That's just fundamental principles right there. So for anyone who's saying, who wants to, you know, can I trade this? Start with this. Are you bullish or bearish on GameStop? Yeah, that's a hard question, right? Sunil says there's a new breed of traders or gamblers trading in the meme stock. It absolutely is, right? I mean, if you've ever read these Reddit streams, they will talk about like, oh, we're going to put our entire account into it. Yeah, it might work a couple times and feel great. And then when you get wiped out, you're like, oh, I don't know. I don't believe in that. I believe in strong trading principles and fundamentals where I have rules and routines, where I analyze. I'm, I'm just simply not interested in trading the fads. I'm interested in trading sector rotation. Where are the institutions putting their money? Not where are the Reddit traders putting their money? <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense. So, you know, could you do a, 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 a ratio? Could you do a deep out of the money? Could you? Sure. I mean, do anything you want. It's your account. Right? I'm not here to convince people not to do things. I'm saying, what's the way that I have seen and done year after year after year after year market after market that works over and over and over again tried and true that's what i'm interested in i am not interested in flashing the pen um and and uh i know plenty of people are so great i mean check out the reddit board see what they're talking about see if you read about it and think yeah that's what i want to do with my money <laughs> um yeah it's interesting because Nobody has answered the question if they're bullish or bearish on GameStop. Yeah, put it out there and then watch for the next three days and see how you did. Um, not to mention <laughs> that it's reporting earnings tomorrow after market. Right? Tomorrow after market, it's got earnings and we'll see what happens there. So here's the, here's the bottom line. I think that credit spreads are fantastic. I love them. Um, they can give me probability. They can give me positive time decay. Um, they can help me to trade out of corrections. I mean, there is nothing I would rather trade coming out of a correction than credit spreads bullishly. Absolutely nothing. Fantastic. We did a lot of credit spreads as the market recovered out of the pandemic over and over, all the time, until the volatility kept bleeding until it got down to the teens. And then we're like, well, wait. Now we're not really seeing that volatility bleed anymore. So, uh, great questions, good discussion, lively stuff. Um, I, I enjoyed it. It's good to see everybody. I'm going to wrap this up and tell you uh, that I'll see you in two weeks for another one of these Active Investor Workshop extravaganzas, festivalazos. Um, I enjoyed it. I hope you did. I'll be back tomorrow morning filling in for Vlad in the morning trading room. I'll be back in the afternoon for the normal trading room. I hope you can join me. If you're only checking it out and seeing what we're all about, that's what we're all about. Good trading principles and fundamentals. If you're looking for flash in the pan, you probably want to go somewhere else, um, right? I, 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 um, well, that's that's the best way that I can put it. Go, go to Reddit and read the threads. I don't even know. I've never actually been on Reddit myself. <laughs> is that what it's called a thread i believe it is read a thread follow the memes and uh see where you go all right well listen i appreciate your time your attention for an hour 
I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see some of you tomorrow morning, some of you tomorrow afternoon. Either way, as always, happy trading.